Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about code inside the world of WordPress. Here's what we're going to cover in this video. So number one, why would anyone bother to learn how to code? Because you might be thinking, I thought the whole point of WordPress was that you don't have to code. That's true, but we're going to see there are some really valid, great reasons to learn how to code. Number two, how do you get started? So we're going to check out the free tools that the pros use. Uh, and then finally, after that, how do you create your first plugin or block type that you didn't just download from the plugin directory, you know, we're going to create a plugin or block that you are the creator of. Let's dig in with the first question. Why would anyone bother to learn how to code? So the first and obvious answer is to create your own plugin. And the reason you would want to do that is because I have it spelled out here. Eventually, you're going to want to do something in WordPress that doesn't exist as a plugin yet. And there is no setting in WordPress to turn it on or off or enable it or customize it, right? You probably have an idea in your head. And if it doesn't exist as a plugin or a setting, you're out of luck unless you know how to code, then you can go make it happen, right? Almost anything is possible if you can write code. And then finally, the final reason is that code is bigger than WordPress. So if you learn these universal transferable coding skills, well, forget about only WordPress related jobs. Now you can get any web developer related. Well, I shouldn't say any, but you're opening a door to a whole new world of career options, right? You are a web developer now. All right. So how do you get started? Well, on the screen right now are the three big tools that the professionals use to code, and the good news is they are all completely free. So let's go through these one by one. The first one, Local WP. If you've been watching this playlist in this series, you already know exactly what Local WP is. But for those of you that haven't been watching this series, Local WP is the easiest way to create a local development environment, meaning it's not like your real live public website. It creates a copy of WordPress that only exists on your personal private computer. It's like a private sandbox that you can test. I mean, you can make as many mistakes as you want on because no one else can see it, only you can see it. See it. So you can spin up, you know, 10, 20, 100, 200 different sites locally. They only exist on your computer and you're free to experiment. Obviously, that's the perfect environment to learn how to code, right? Because when you're coding, I mean, when you first write your first line of code, you're, the thing that you're trying to build isn't done yet. So your website's going to look broken. So you want some privacy. You want a local development environment. So step number one, if you don't already have local WP, just pause this video. The official website is localwp.com. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Just pause this video, go get this installed, and then come back to this video. I won't walk through it with you, but to create your first site in local WP, it's falling off the edge of my screen, but in the very bottom left corner, there's a plus symbol. You just, I mean, if you hover over it, it says add local site. Just click that and walk through uh, you know, it'll ask you questions. Just click next, next, next. All the default options are great. And just set up your local website. So for example, here's my local website. No one in the world can see this other than me. It's on my personal private computer. And this is where I'm going to write a bit of code with you a little bit later in this video. Also, the very first video in this playlist or this series on YouTube shows you how to use local WP. Cool. Let's move on to the next tool that you need uh, to start coding in WordPress. I mean, you can use any text editor you want, but by far the industry standard is VS Code. VS is short for Visual Studio. So it's completely free software. Here's the website, it's just code.visualstudio.com. So just pause this video, go get it downloaded and installed. Again, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And then the final ingredient that you need is Node.js. Again, completely free software. So again, once you have installed both local and VS Code, our final step before we can start coding together and actually learning together uh, is to make sure you have Node.js installed on your computer. So pause this video. The official website is nodejs.org. I recommend the LTS version, long-term support. You can't go wrong. Again, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So come back and resume this video once you have Node installed. Okay, so just to be clear, from this point in the video forward, I'm going to assume that if you're watching the video, you have these three things installed. Now, how do we actually get to work? So here is my local website. It ends in .local, the domain. Uh, so I created this using local WP. And if I go into my dashboard and click on plugins, if you've been following along with this series, you've installed these several plugins as well, but that's irrelevant. You don't need these plugins. I'm just showing you this screen because we want to create our own new plugin together using code. 
right? We are the creator of the plugin, so we can make it have any feature, any setting, any detail, any concept that we can possibly think of. So how in the world do you create your own plugin, right? Like we don't want to add the new plugin. We don't want to click that button. We don't want someone else's plugin. We want to create our own plugin. Here's how you do that. In local WP, you need to find uh, your website's files. So like where on your hard drive, like where, like what folder directory, where do those WordPress files live? The easiest way to find that uh, in local WP, so you can see my website's called like quickpractice.local, there's this icon right here below the site title called site folder. And if you click on site folder, well, that's gonna open up your computer's file explorer and these are the files. Now, dig into this exact folder with me. So it's inside the app folder and then it's inside the public folder. Now, these are the core WordPress files uh, you can see a lot of them start with like WP dash, but we want to dig down into an even more specific subfolder. So look for the folder that's named WP dash content, dig into that folder. Now we're getting very close in this folder. You'll see, you know, there's a folder called themes, but there's a folder called plugins. Go into that plugins folder. Aha. Now you'll see one folder for each. I mean, if you're on a brand new website that doesn't have any plugins, you won't see anything, but Typically, each new plugin you have will show up as a folder here. So you and I, let's just create a brand new empty folder in this plugins folder. So just right click new folder. Uh, you could name it anything you want, but let's try to give it a unique name that won't, you know, have a conflict with another existing plugin. So why don't we just call it like our amazing plugin? Cool. Now what we want to do is open this folder that we just created our amazing plugin we want to oh and by the way don't have spaces in your the folder name so like notice how i have a dash instead of a space don't ever have a space in a file or a folder name so you want to use dashes cool but now we want to open up this folder in vs code if you're on a mac you can just click and drag your new folder on top of the vs code icon down in your dock if you're on windows uh, you can open up VS Code and then in the top left, like the file menu, you can click file. And then instead of open file, you can choose open directory or open folder. Also on Windows, if you just have the VS Code window open, you can drag your new folder on top of an open VS Code editor window and that should open up the directory. Once you do that, once you open the folder with VS Code, you're gonna see this screen and at first glance it looks scary, it looks intimidating, right? It's like, oh no, do you trust the authors of the files in this folder? Yes, you do, because the question is basically, do you trust yourself? You are the one who created this folder. So yes, you, it's an empty folder, it's harmless. We absolutely trust it. So just click the button, yes, I trust the authors. Cool, that's a, just a quick security feature. All right, now you'll know that you opened up a directory if in the left-hand area, you see this explorer. Currently it's empty because we don't have any files or folders in that new plugin subfolder of ours. But really quick, before we create our plugin, let's just create uh, a new file. So if you right click in this empty explorer area, uh, you can click new file and then just name it like test you don't even need to say anything else. Just test and press enter. And that should show up. So now back in your file explorer, if you dig into our amazing plugin, if you dig into it, you should see that new file. That's just a quick test to make sure that like you're in the correct location, that your VS code is pointing towards the exact folder that you think it is. That way you don't spend the next five minutes in this video you know, with VS code not even pointing in the right location. So with that done now, now that you've made sure you're in the right spot, you can just right click on test. We don't actually want a file called test. So just delete that. Click yes, delete it. Cool. Okay. So now everyone watching this video has VS code open to a relevant new empty plugin folder. How do we create a new plugin? It's really easy. We're going to open up our terminal down here. And the easiest way to do that on windows, on your keyboard, I want you to press down control and then J. So control J. If you're on Mac, I want you to press command J. So that opens up this bottom terminal area and you can press control or command J to toggle it, like to close it, open it. You get the idea. So with your terminal open, uh, so you can see, you can type in commands down here. Here's the command we're going to type in. And by the way, the command we're going to type in here requires Node.js to be installed on your computer. That's why a couple of minutes ago I said, be sure you installed Node.js. But check this out. Say npx and then a space at symbol WordPress, all lowercase, forward slash. Um, that's like the same key that you would use to make a, qu a question mark. Just don't hold down the shift key. So forward slash, not a backslash, but a forward slash. And then create dash block at symbol latest 
and then a space, and now we get to uh, give our plugin a fun name. Just to keep things short, why don't we just call it awesome? I mean, you could fill this in later with a different value, but you get the idea. Then a space, and now type in dash dash variant, and then a space, and then this might drop down to the next line for me because I'm zoomed in, but type in dynamic, and then a space, and then dash dash target dash dir, and then a space, and then a dot. That's it. If you need to pause the video uh, to type this in, I'll try to include this um, as something in the description for this video that you can just copy and paste. Uh, but yeah, if you need to pause the video to type this in, go for it. Uh, I'll let you know this is just going to create sort of a boilerplate brand new block plugin folder for us. Uh, this is a really cool, powerful command. This is what all the pros use to create a boilerplate for their new block type plugin. So go ahead and press enter. By the way, this is an official tool from the official WordPress team. This is so cool. Several years ago, you were sort of on your own, but in the current year, the ecosystem for creating with WordPress as a developer is awesome. We have first party official tools that are just chef's kiss. Um, so this installation process should only take, I would guess, maybe a minute at tops, may maybe slightly over a minute. So be patient. If you have a really slow internet connection, uh, this might take maybe two or three or four minutes, but uh, through the magic of video editing, well, you can actually see mine just finished. As soon as your command finishes, you should see now that your explore area is not empty. So now we have these boilerplate files, and let's see what this did for us. If you go back into your WordPress dashboard and refresh your plugin screen, aha, here we see a plugin that exists but hasn't been activated yet, and it has that name we chose of awesome. Go ahead and click the activate to activate that new plugin. And let's see what it does. It, well, I'll give you a hint. It's a block type. So if you go into any of your post or page editors, like I'll go into bean salad and maybe in between my two paragraphs or just down at the bottom, try to add a new block. Only instead of a paragraph block, try to choose a block type of, and you guessed it, in the search field, if I start to type in the word awesome, there we see it. And you can click on it. It inserts it. This is our own custom type that we are in control of. Uh, let's click save. And then you can go view that post on the front end bean salad, but if I scroll down, it says awesome, hello for my dynamic block. Let's see why this is so cool or why this is so exciting. So go back into VS Code, and before we can save changes to our files, we need to make sure in our command line. So again, remember, you can always get your terminal by pressing Control J on Windows or Command J on Mac, but down here in the terminal, uh, type this in with me. By the way, you just saw me run clear. All clear does is scroll your terminal back up to the top so your cursor isn't down at the bottom. You don't ever need to type that. That's just a habit of mine. But I need you to type in this command with me. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Type in npm start. So npm and then a space and then the word start. Go ahead and press enter. That task will never finish. It's just going to run in the background forever until we manually tell it to stop. However, with that command up and running in the background, if you have a small screen, you can hide your terminal. It won't stop that task. It's just running in the background. With that running, we are now free to act as a programmer, act as a developer. So let's have some fun. Let's try to change what this is outputting. We're gonna see where it's on your front end. It says, awesome, hello from a dynamic block. In VS Code, go into the SRC folder, stands for source, like the source code, and in that SRC subfolder, you'll see a file named render.php. Double click on that file, and now we can begin editing it. So here you see like awesome hello from a dynamic block. You could change that. So see how it ends with an exclamation? I could have it end with like dot, 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 one, two, three, four, five. If you hit Control or Command S to save the changes to this file, and then you go back to your website and hit the refresh button, there it is. Now, I know we didn't learn anything about code, but you just made it to a source code file, and those changes are appearing on your website. So you're getting dangerously, I mean, technically that's coding. You're getting dangerously close to writing some code. Now, what if you wanted to change uh, the editor side? Because back in the editor screen, if I refresh, nothing changes, but this is saying, awesome, hello from the editor. Let me show you how you could change that. Back in VS Code, in that same SRC or source folder, go into the file that's named edit.js. So you would double click edit.js. If we scroll down to the very bottom of that file, you'll, you'll see awesome, hello from the editor. So again, you could customize this text. You could say, awesome, hello from my cool plugin. And then just hit Control or Command S to save your changes. Go back and manually refresh your post editor screen, and there you see it. Hello from my cool plugin. Now again, we didn't learn anything about code. We didn't change the styling or the appearance or you know 
we didn't learn anything about code, but you're editing a source code file. Now, I want these videos to remain bite-sized and easily digestible. So that's it for today's video. I wanna be able to refer back to this video for anyone who wants to set up their coding environment, but you have now set up a plugin and you are in 100% control of its features, of its styling, of everything, because this is the source code. This is where the true power of WordPress comes to life. Now, anything we can think of, we can make it come to life in these various files. I'm not just features, but appearance, everything, data sorting, querying, anything you could possibly want is available now. In our very next lesson, we're going to learn the basics of HTML and CSS. I'll give you a bit of a hint. Back in render.php on line six, see how this starts with a paragraph and then it ends the paragraph right here? That is HTML. In our next video, we're going to learn about that. And we're also going to learn about something called CSS. Uh, you'll see that in your folder, there's a file called style.scss. If you go into that file, this is how you can control the exact styling. So the colors, the shape, the size, the placement, the layout. Do you want a two column layout, a five column layout? I mean, CSS is how you can create chef's kiss, any design that you could think of. This is also uh, at companies that have professional designers, like Fortune 500 companies that have um, people whose entire job is to create really specific brand guidelines and identity, like super specific styling. Well, then a programmer needs to come along and write very specific code down to the pixel in the exact color shade to get it exact. So I'm just letting you know, if you get really good at CSS, I mean, that in and of itself, and I'm talking really good, if you get very good at CSS, that is a career path in and of itself. Really quick, let's talk about that task that was running in the background. So if you press, again, that's Control J on Windows or Command J on Mac. If you want to stop this, like let's say it's the end of the workday and you wanna stop, you just press, and this is both for Windows and Mac, it's Control C. Control C will stop that task from running in the background. And then again, if you ever wanted to start it up again, it's just to refresh your memory, it's NPM Start. That fires it up, that will run in the background forever. What it's doing is it's watching for any changes that you might save to these files, and then it's compiling and outputting them into the build folder. But it's gonna run forever in the background, and again, to stop it, it's just control, and you need to click into your terminal with it activated, it's just control C. Cool, so in our very next lesson, we're going to dig into HTML and CSS, and we now have the groundwork with these files up where we can learn everything that we could possibly need. I'm so excited to go on this journey with you. Now, let's talk about ways to support this video. If you're enjoying this series, if you wanna help support the channel, there are a few different ways. Uh, so from my website, you'll find a link to my Patreon. So this is my website, learnwebco.com. This is where you'll find all the different links and ways to support this YouTube channel. There's also a membership that you can join on YouTube that has very similar perks to the Patreon. I also have different courses. Uh, these are feature length courses. Some of them are 20 plus hours long, and they're available on both Udemy and Teachable. Also, another way to support the channel is to use my DreamHost affiliate link. So in my real life, I've used DreamHost to host my websites for the last 19 years, and I've had excellent experiences with them. So if you need a host for your website, uh, if you use my affiliate link to DreamHost, that I will receive compensation for sending new users their way. You can join my newsletter. Uh, you can follow me on other social media. That's about it. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you feel like you learned something. Stay tuned. In the next video, we're digging into HTML and CSS. Have a great day. Take care. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon and YouTube memberships. I don't have any producers yet, but your name could go here. But I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Rodney and David for being sponsor tier members over on Patreon. I really appreciate the support. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.